Hello and welcome to Bob and Talk. In this video, I want to show you the variety of different maps that are available in Close 3D, where they're located in the property editor and what you can do with them, what kind of effects, what kind of beautiful textures that you can create with them. So for that purpose, I have a just a generic top and bottom. I have silk taffeta for the bottom. I have my knit cotton rayon jersey for my top. And I will be applying the different maps on the top. So I'm going to give you a close-up look of that. So in order to see the maps in Close 3D, you need to have the object browser and the property editor open. You need to select the fabric for which you want to apply the different maps. And now let's take a look and find the maps in the property editor. So first of all, make sure that you're under material. We're going to work on the front of the material and we're going to have our basic parameters open. If this happens to be closed, make sure that you left click and open so that you can see all of the different possibilities and properties here. Now, any of these fabrics, if you bring them from the library, they have their own maps in terms of texture and normal map. I already deleted mine by left clicking here on the button. So I have no texture, no normal map for this fabric. It looks very generic. Now, if I, for example, uh, zoom in on the silk taffeta, you will see that the taffeta has a texture map and it has a normal map and you can see that that's a very very light it's you can barely see it but you can see that when that fabric is loaded in the object browser you identify the map by looking at this square here so let's go back to my knit cotton rayon jersey and let's work with that you do need some kind of a black and white image to begin with and that will be the base for generating your maps. So I got my image from Unsplash. I chose this particular image from Ricardo Angel, and then I brought the image into this normal map generator. So I dropped it in here and that already started generating the different maps for me. So you can see here that right now I have a height map and here um, in order to generate the normal map you can left click and just drop this and sometimes it takes a second for this to generate but we can see now that we have our height map on the left side our normal map i can also left click to get a displacement map here and here in the preview you can choose different shapes so once you're done with that you can download them or you can use photoshop to generate maps now let's go back to Clo. So I already have various maps from that image generated here. And let's see how they work. So again, we're in the knit cotton rayon jersey here. I am under basic parameters. And the first map that we have here is texture map. Texture map is one of the most important basic maps. It defines the main colors of the surface. It could be a print, it could be just a general texture, or it could represent some kind of a print that you want to have on your material. It is found under basic parameter and it is the very first map here. You may have to click and open that in order to see the next option here is desaturation. So if you have a really dark uh, material, uh, fabric that may be like a dark denim that comes in from the library. Here is you want to click on desaturation in order to apply lighter colors. So let's apply the very first texture map on my top. So you can do that in two ways. You can either click, left click on the browsing button here, the four little squares, and that will take you to folders and give you a choice of what you want to apply to this top and you can navigate to the folder that you want or if you already have it open here if you have a shortcut in your library you can grab it left click drag it and drop it make sure that you're dropping it in the texture okay so this is my current texture for my top and if you're not happy with this particular layout, you can always come change up here from simulation to print layout. 
choose the fabric that you want to work with and then just change the location of your pattern pieces and designate a different layout. So I am happy with my layout right now. So I'm going to go back to simulation and we can see that we already have the basic texture of our top. Okay. That gave us basically a black and white print in a way. So next map we're going to take a look at is the normal map. Again, I don't have a map here because I deleted it. Normal map, also called a bump map, creates a surface texture. It looks purple like this, and it does not change the mesh or the geometry. It just gives you an illusion of bumpiness. It gives you an illusion of height. So let's see what happens when we bring this map here. So I'm going to use the JPEG image and I'm going to bring it and drop it in the normal map. And again, you have two ways of bringing this by browser, dragging and dropping. And if you missed what this looked like, I'm just going to um, go back a little bit and you can see the very subtle change. So I'm going to do it again. And this time I brought the PNG file and now I'm going to replace it with the JPEG. So you can see that now this looks like it has depth a lot more, but it's an illusion. If you take a look at the edge of her arm, you will see that there is no bumpiness here. It's a perfectly smooth line. There is no um, geometry created. There's no height, but it visually gives us a lot more depth. This is perfect for creating knitwear, for example, or um, some kind of rough textures. We can see that, yeah, we have that illusion. Okay, the next map that we're going to take a look at is displacement map. Displacement map is the next map here, and it is basically the height map. It physically displaces the mesh of a garment or accessory, whatever material you're working on, and it gives us the illusion of depth. It is also a grayscale. So the black area, so here is my file. The black or dark areas will give us the bottom and the white or light areas will give us the peak or the height of the highs and lows. Now, keep in mind that for normal map, you can increase the intensity here to, uh, and you can see how it changes. You get a bit more of an illusion, less of an illusion. And next, let's place the displacement map here. So I'm gonna grab my displacement map, left click, hold it, and then drag it and drop it here. Next thing that you wanna take a look on the displacement map, right now I have amount at zero, zero, zero. So with amount of zero, we're not gonna see any difference. We need to change this to a higher number in order to see it. And there are two things that we need to do. First one is change the amount, and second one is to open the render window. So I'm gonna change this to a 0.5, for example. I'm gonna click return, and I'm also gonna open my render window. I need to shrink this window a little bit so I can see better. And I'm going to zoom in a bit closer so we have better idea. And I'm going to start my render. So I'm going to left click. With this 0.5 amount, we can see the render window generating a bit more of height. So we'll start seeing some geometry changing here. In reality, if we want to see a really uh, big difference, we need to change this to a higher number. But you can start with something lower and then maybe move to a higher number. So I'm going to go up to five and refresh my render window. You can see that the texture is starting to appear. We're starting to have higher highs, lower lows. If you need more of a height, you can change this number to a higher number. Let's bump it up a bit more and put it into 10 and see how that's going to change. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit to see the textural elements that really start to appear. Now you can see how some of these are starting to really push up and the render window can take a bit more time, but you can already see the bumpiness in the textural elements. Now we can change this to an even higher amount, much more textural. Let's go like this. And you can see how this is really starting to push away from the body. Now we are starting to get a texture that is truly um, high highs and low lows. 
right? This became very, very bumpy. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And let's see what this texture looks like. I'm going to go back to uh, 20 and let's take a look at the next map here. The next map that we're going to take a look at is the opacity map and it is under displacement map. JPEG files will use RGB, PNG files will use the alpha channel. The opacity map is also called alpha map it defines the degree of transparency or translucency of areas in your fabric. Grayscale image is also what we use. The dark would be transparent and the light would be opaque. You could use either one of the JPEG um, or PNG images as long as it is black and white. So I'm gonna grab my original uh, texture map and I'm gonna drag it and drop it in the opacity map area. And you can see immediately that I have transparency here in the 3D window and I would have to restart the render in order to see that. But here is all of the dark areas are transparent and all of the light areas are opaque. Now again, if you're using PNG image, make sure you're using the alpha channel or you're not going to see the transparency. So I'm going to refresh my render window and close this one to give you a bit more space. And this will give us now height, bumpiness and transparency at the same time. And again, this might take a minute to generate, but you can see already the translucency and the transparency of the opacity map. The next map that we're going to use, so I'm going to stop the render for now so we can take a good look at the next one. Next map we're going to use is roughness map and roughness map is right under opacity map and if you don't see the map itself just left click here on the drop down menu and select map and that will give you the space here to create uh, to drag and drop the map. Roughness map is basically controlling the light information. Fabric can look shinier or more reflective depending on if you have dark or light areas. The very dark or black areas would make the fabric very reflective. The white or light areas will give it no reflection. So let's take a look at the skirt and apply the roughness map, which will give us the light info, dark, very reflective, light, no reflection. So let's apply that just to the roughness map. So I'm going to come here to roughness map and bring this texture just for the skirt and just for the roughness. Now you can see that the effect here that we have on the skirt now truly represents what the roughness map does. Okay, The roughness creating the shine effect on the skirt we have no color, no transparency. We have just the metal high shine look to it. Okay, so this is just the roughness. Now, if we want to add the, this to the metal map as a metalness map. Now, let's make sure that we have a good angle here to see what this looks like in terms of texture. And now let's add this to the metalness and that will be our last map. There is even more, you can see now, there's even more of a metallic shine here. It looks even more high shine metallic. And again, you can play with the slider here to give it an even shinier, more metallic look or less metallic look. For the roughness map, you can also invert if you wanted to see the effect on one or the other. Uh, you see it best at a good angle. Within the invert function here, let's not invert and see what it looks like. And let's invert it. Watch the 3D window. And those are our two options, inverted and uninverted, depending on your preference. So that was the six maps that we were using. Texture map, normal map, displacement map, opacity map, roughness map, and metalness.